You're listening to Searching for More, a podcast of the Diocese of Arlington. On this episode, Father Keith O'Hare, pastor of St. Louis Catholic Church in Alexandria, talks about his experience in the Dominican Republic and its message to us about Easter. Everyone's burial will someday be canceled, right? By the death and resurrection of Jesus, he's going to cancel all the burials, open up all the tombs, and we're all going to we're all going to come back, right? So when I think of Easter, it's real. Hear Father O'Hare talk about the meaning of Easter for each of us and invite everyone to experience the beauty of the Mass at this special time of year. This episode's host is Amber Roseboom, Director of Media Relations for the Catholic Diocese of Arlington. Father, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we're going to talk about a very important issue, actually one of the most joyful seasons for all humanity, and that's the season of Easter. But I wanted to start off on a little bit of a lighter note. I understand that you are an accomplished musician. You play the saxophone, jazz saxophone, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. You play the guitar, and I know you sing because I've seen you sing on YouTube. Can you tell us a little bit about this? You actually, you studied music. I did, yeah. You know, a lot of priests don't have a straight route to priesthood. I'm one of those, right? So I grew up in Fairfax, and I was very fortunate to play saxophone in the school band at St. Louis, uh, St. Leo's Parish. And then I showed some talents. My parents were very attentive to that and got me some private lessons with some great professors. And so when it was time to move on from high school to college, I decided that I would major in music. So you can actually major in jazz saxophone. Not a lot of books involved. Um, <laughs> and Why didn't I think of that? Yeah, yeah. So I was directed <laughs> to the University of Miami in Florida, okay. which is known for football, but actually has a great um, music school for jazz. So I went there for two years. I was majoring in jazz. I learned a lot, but I also realized these guys are amazing. I'm good, but these guys are amazing. I don't think this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I think they're called to it, not me. Um, and then along the way, I picked up high, um, playing guitar and okay. discovered I could sing at like age 18. I never knew that until I was in a choir in high school, and then I knew I could carry a pitch. <clears throat> so I did the rock and roll band in high school, things like that. So I've been very fortunate in my uh musical life to get to do all different kinds of music from classical symphonic that's things that's fantastic to, music to is jazz. such a gift i love it yeah it's a you universal put out language. A cd didn't yeah. you i did yeah so i wasn't expecting i thought i had kind of left music behind a bit and when i when i entered the seminary i was in the scola gregorian yeah, right. chant now that was my music was gregorian <laughs> chant right so but then i had a, a special um assignment serving in our mission in the Dominican Republic. Big impact on my life, kind of gives you lots of perspective. How and then long were you there? I was there for nine years. Nine years, okay. So that had a big impact on my life, and then I kind of, there was something of a resurrection of songwriting in my life. I thought I'd left that behind, but so songs just started to come, and then some friends kind of encouraged me that, you know, maybe these songs aren't meant to be just for you to listen to and enjoy. Maybe they're supposed to be shared with others. So my, uh, my brother, who lives up in New York, <clears throat> hooked me up with a studio up there. So about five years ago, I got to record those songs. They're simple, you know, just kind of meditative. So it's recent, though. It's out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah. fantastic. I want to read for folks a quote that I found from you online so people can go and research you as well. But I love this quote, and I thought it was so relevant to what we're going to talk about today. It says, different genres of music give glory to God in different ways. Some give glory in a devotional way and others in a sacred liturgical way. As a musician, I recognize the power of music to sanctify and inspire in both devotional and in liturgical ways. Music has a power, don't you think, to draw us to divine truth? Absolutely, yeah. And we could we could spend hours on that topic. There's there's two we'll kinds have to have of you prayer. Back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So there's two kinds of prayer. There's liturgical ritual prayer. Mm -hmm. We experience that principally in the mass, right? And but confession, baptisms mm -hmm. is ritual prayer. But then there's devotional prayer. Devotional prayer takes limitless forms, right? So for some people, it's it's walking quiet in the woods. That's their that's their kind of prayer. Other people, it's a prayer group with, you know, um, guitar and vocal music. Yeah, there's just uh, limitless um, 
versions or varieties of that. So in the in the musical world, you know, for some people, uh, prayer and praise, Steubenville style is gonna gonna really speak to them. Other people, it's gonna be uh, more traditional forms of music. But some music is suited to and comes from the liturgical experience of the church. But that's not the only where the only place where God is speaking, right? So, so music really has its its place both in our liturgical life, but also in our personal devotional life. Right. You know? So I've experienced that both. It's, it's really just a, a beautiful thing to experience from the inside. Yeah, right? that's wonderful. That's really beautiful. Transitioning a little bit to talk specifically about what we're here to talk about, and that's the season of Easter. I think, you know, at, at least from a lay perspective, when you go into the season of Easter, you know, you get into Holy Week and there's a lot of anticipation for it. And then and then you kind of, there's a temptation to go on autopilot, right? It's like, okay, what mass, what time are the masses we're gonna go to? Who are we going to see for brunch or Easter dinner? What are we gonna eat? And then you can kind of just march through that. But there's a challenge, I think, to all of us to really open our hearts. How important do you think that is? And do you think that, that there really is the opportunity for, let's say, faithful Catholics who maybe have been practicing their faith for years and years to learn and grow in new ways each year at Easter? Sure. Well, as Catholics, we have our routines. You know, I remember in the seminary, one of our professors saying, you know what? It's like we're a football team. We run the same play over and over again, the same play, you know. Uh, so we have a lot of ritual repetition, which enables us to enter into things together with a beautiful unity. But we have to be clear about this, that we never experience them exactly the same way because our life is never exactly the same in every moment, right? So just considering this past year, for example, called the dreadful year, we bring that year to this this year, you know, to this Easter. Right. And so there's always something a little different in your own heart to begin with, right? But then Easter is simply about the person of Jesus. There's not really something else to focus on. Like, that's it. It's the person of Jesus. And any person you can come to know over time deeper and deeper, and that person comes to know you deeper and deeper over time. So I saw recently on the cover of a booklet an image of the face of Jesus inside of a diamond and the image of like the face of Jesus radiating outward through those many, many facets, right? So when you think about who Jesus is, he suffered, he died, he rose. Okay, I think everyone gets that, right? But he's, he's the redeemer, he's the savior, he's the friend, he's the healer, he's the forgiver. I mean, you think about all the different titles of Jesus that you're never done really getting to know who he is. So whatever our level of devotion and faith is, there's more to uncover, more to experience. And the more effort and time you give to that, you will find that that it's true. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you for kind of laying that out for us a little bit. You said you spent some time in in Bonica. And when we were talking about this podcast, you told me a story that for me really kind of hit home and... Um, it was a new way to look at the message of Easter. I thought it was awesome. Can you share that with us right now? Sure, yeah, I got a lot of mission stories. So this mission is located in the Dominican Republic on the border of Haiti, on the Dominican side. Bonica is the name of the mission. <clears throat> it's composed of about 60 different communities all spread around. It takes like seven hours to get from one end of the mission to the other. But some of the campos are a little more reachable. You can get there about once a month. So there's this one campo or community called Los Memisos, and about a 45 minute drive from the town where you live down there. And a beautiful man, I'm gonna paint a picture for you. It's a beautiful story with a beautiful man at the center of it. So this beautiful old man, his name is Abran, or like Abraham. And he was pretty old by that point. He was in a wheelchair and he lived on the side of a mountain. So even though we're talking about the, the DR, in the central DR, it's actually pretty hilly and mountainous. So he lives on the side of a mountain and he couldn't come down to the chapel. So but he would hear the truck arrive, the priest is here, the truck is here. So he would ask his wife, like, turn my wheelchair towards the chapel. I want to be facing the chapel while the priest is celebrating the Mass. Beautiful faith, this man. And then after Mass, I would bring Holy Communion up, you know, walk up to his, his house, and we'd, uh, um, he'd receive Holy Communion. Did that for years, and then he was declining, and I was anointing him, and I got the word from someone in town that, Father... Abraham se murió. Father Abraham died. 
Oh, ah, my. you know what? I just saw him a couple weeks ago. I anointed him, so may he rest in peace. So she said, well, Father, the family, we all want to go there for his burial tomorrow. Because there's no embalming there. You just like, when someone dies, people just start crying and screaming, and they clean out the house, and the house becomes like a little funeral home. The one room of your house becomes a, a viewing yeah, so okay, clear yeah, you have people in from the community yeah, and the family. Yeah, people just start showing up. Okay. Word spreads, right? So that's what I'm picturing. We're heading out to the burial. We're going to see his body laid out there in the house, and then we'll make our way to the cemetery and, and have his, his burial. So the next morning, I pull up in the truck, the larger trucks, again, load people up, and there's nobody there waiting on the street. And I was like, well, what happened? They said they wanted to ride. So then the lady comes down, his, his daughter, she said, oh, father, I go, where are the people? She said, oh, father, el entierro está cancelado. I'm like, she said, the burial, it's canceled. I'm like, the <laughs> What's burial's going on? Canceled. How do you, I'm not sure how you do that. She says, yeah, El Borbio, he came back. He came back to life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you want to go see him then? Okay. So it turns out, you know, that he must have looked dead. <laughs> I'll just say that. He was in a <laughs> so deep all sleep, the, at least. Pretty deep. So his heartbeat, his heartbeat must have gotten real low, low enough that they didn't hear it, and they just started crying and screaming he's died he's died they started clearing out the house and at some point well they realized oh he wasn't dead right so but that phrase has always stuck with me father his burial is canceled yes that's beautiful i love it and I, reflecting later i thought to myself you know what everyone's burial will someday be canceled right by the death and resurrection of jesus he's going to cancel all the burials open up all the tombs and we're all going to we're all going to come back right so when i think of easter it's real like this isn't a myth and a story this right. is the truth that we're made to come back and i got a little taste of somebody like coming back you know that day was, it was, it was pretty inspiring i love that story you know what else i think of when you talk about that you talk about it's the truth it's the truth that we're coming back we as as people we're searching for the truth you know i think a lot of when you think of like friends and family who may not have come to the faith yet um there's something inside us that is searching for truth and at easter it's really kind of encapsulated in these three days that are so powerful i loved that story from bonica i thought that was really neat <laughs> thank you for sharing it with sure, us yeah. so in thinking about that too and um you know, thinking about, as Christians, we like to say we're an Easter people. What does that mean exactly? You know, it's fun. I love to look up the history of words. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's funny because in Spanish, we don't say Easter. We say Domingo Pascual, basically Passover Sunday. Okay. But that's not a story. But So I was checking on this word Easter. Like, actually, it seems like it's just in English and German. We have a word of that, of that sort of origin. And it goes back to, like, a, a word meaning, like, the sunrise or, you know, Okay. Springtime, right? Mm -hmm. So certainly when I think of, you know, Easter, sunrise, some churches have like sunrise services, right. things like that, right? Well, you know, there's something of a resurrection every morning, right? When you get up and you're not feeling <laughs> so <slow> risen, <laughs> but somehow you rise, right? Somehow, yeah. you, somehow you get up, right? So which is to say that no one is against new beginnings, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's in favor of new beginnings. Hope, you know, hope springs eternal, like the poet says, right? So... Easter is something that resonates with human nature, no matter what your devotional faith life is like. Nobody is against having a new beginning. Mm -hmm. So when you think about being an Easter people, of course, we're talking about Jesus, the person who has risen and what it means for, for our own future resurrection. But there's also, just on a human level, just a new beginning, almost like New Year's, right? So a new beginning, risen life, rising from whatever is dead in us, I can only encourage people to look for resurrections in your relationships, right? So because relationships can go into certain kind of suffering and trials and death of a kind, right? That that we shouldn't give up on that. That there can right. always be a resurrection. And that's in, something everyone in experiences real life. in different relationships. Yeah, that's a universal yeah. matter. Yeah. 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 That's great. Thank you. We talk about new beginnings, too. I think about, um, you know, just our, our personal journeys as Catholics. Our conversion is a lifelong process, and, you know, we kind of go up and down, and hopefully it's like up and down on an upward trajectory, yeah. <laughs> for lack of a better way to say it. But we always fall, you know, and we fail. Um, how important is 
regular confession? Because we talk about confession during Advent and Lent at a minimum, but how important is regular confession in our walk? Yeah, so confession can be experienced at different levels, right? There's the confession of someone who's been away for a long time. That's a pretty powerful resurrection experience. Then regular confession for those who are practicing their faith is going to provide, you know, I think more room for the Holy Spirit to act. You know, when people are confessing on a regular basis, often my counsel to them is going to come back to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the one who is the sanctifier, right? The one Mm -hmm. who gives wisdom to the mind and and purity and and goodness and love and grace to, to the heart. And so regular confession, you know, confession when we're absolutely in need of it is sort of like, you know, um, back to life. I'm I'm alive again. But that doesn't mean you're fully alive, right? So you're alive. You're not dead. You're alive. But regular confession is going to bring you into the fullness of life, shall we say, by the power of the Spirit. So Jesus said, I came that they might have life. That's the confession you need to get back to the full. I think that might be what we're talking about with regular confession, Mm -hmm. that you can go deeper and really examine maybe what's happening below the surface of the actual sins themselves, right? So really, what you're really doing with regular confession is giving more, giving your heart over more to the power of the Spirit. I think that's something for people to consider. Thank you. Yeah, so when this this airs, it will be Holy Week. Um, So it will be the Wednesday of Holy Week. And... As folks look at the days that are coming, what spirit would you encourage them to enter in to say Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and ultimately Easter? Well, you know, we're not gonna experience Easter Sunday if we don't experience Holy Thursday and Good Friday. It's really hard. It's like showing up to the movie in the last 30 minutes, right? I mean, you're gonna, that's You'll know a, how it ends. That's a good analogy. You'll know yeah, how it right, ends. Right, right. But you're not going to feel the ending. Mm-hmm. And the ending's not going to have its impact because the whole story hasn't entered in, right? So can't encourage people uh, enough to make that decision to to give time. So Thursday night, probably not so hard. That's after work hours, right, to attend the Holy Thursday evening Mass. Good Friday, that takes some effort, right? So to make that decision between 12 and 3, check your local parishes, what they're doing. But a lot of places are doing things between those particular three hours, right? I remember when I was growing up that my mom said, all right, between 12 and 3, you can't go out and play. You had to get, we had to go, just go in our room and just. Be not. sad. Yeah, basically. <laughs> just kidding. You kind of say that. Right, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. It, made a big, it made a big impact, though. Right. Like, okay, these are holy hours, these three right. hours. So th- giving those three hours to God, like, that's really going to be a, good investment Mm -hmm. of of your time and then when Easter comes with the glorious trumpets and the flutes and the violins and lots of people and the flowers whatever needs to be sort of rising in you it's gonna it's gonna be happening much more because you did the dying and the suffering with him you know Thursday and Friday right and it is you really do experience that joy like in a personal way much more Mm -hmm. Whenever I look at days like this, too, I think as as Catholics, we are always, you know, how can we share our faith? I I hope we're always thinking that. I'm not always thinking that, but, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that we're always looking at ways that we can evangelize more. Um, for me personally, I, I didn't grow up Catholic, so I was one of those people, you know, oh, wow. who came to the faith a little bit later in life. And so I look at times like Easter and I say, how can we use these times, times when everybody's aware it's Easter? You know, it's not, it's not a feast day or something that maybe we are just more familiar with in the church. How can people use Easter to share the message of Christ with people, maybe in their family or, or around them? Sure, it's a great question because as Catholics, we're, we're cautious or afraid or don't feel confident to be... Right messengers of of the gift of our faith right we think oh well just the professionals can do that that's not for regular people but it's not true um we're all called and there's a beautiful quote from saint augustine he said anything which can be shared is only truly possessed when it is being shared i'm gonna say it again it's just a beautiful quote to think about anything which can be shared any good thing which can be shared is only truly possessed 
when it is being shared. So that couldn't be more true than of the gift of faith, that if you have received the gift of faith, Mm -hmm. not sharing it starts to put the possession of it actually kind of in jeopardy because it's it's being closed in. It's is it becoming something prideful? Is it becoming something just just be aware that if it's not kind of radiating outward in some natural way that's fit to your personality, then it's it's Jesus said, don't hide it, right? Don't hide it. I was thinking about that basket, when you said right? that. Like, so, what does the reverse of that quote mean? Yeah. Or, you know, if we're yeah, not sharing it. Yeah, that's hiding under the bushel basket. Right. So, mm-hmm. so it's great to have reverence for those who are called in a special way, like a missionary or priest or a nun. That's beautiful. I have reverence for their, for their gift of sharing the faith. But there's nothing more satisfying than helping someone else to kind of experience the love of God, right? If that's really the greatest gift in our life, there's nothing more satisfying than helping someone else experience that. So you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to have all the answers. But all you have to do is say, hey, would you like to come to Mass with me? We're going Mm -hmm. on Thursday or Friday or Sunday, whatever it's right. So, so many people, and I hear this over and over again, so many people will tell me, you know, I, I, I was wanting to go, but I just never got invited. And people can have the image or the perception that, like, it's like a club that you, you can't go. Like, you, you got to be Catholic to go, right? So please, I'm asking anyone who's listening to this right now that there's someone who wants to go, but they're waiting for you. I think right? so, yeah. There's someone that wants to go to experience liturgy. So many church, and even people go to other churches, they don't have liturgy. They don't have sacred ritual. They don't. And what seems so simple and maybe not so impressive to us can be amazing to them. Just the formality and the unity and the the traditions, that can really speak to people's hearts who've never experienced that. So I would highly encourage people to realize that Easter is a great time, not just for resurrection and relationships. It's also a great time for opening the door of faith for someone else. And all it takes is an invitation. Hey, would you like to go to Mass with me? Nobody's going to be offended. The worst thing that happens is they're just going to say, no, no, thank you. No harm done, right? That wasn't the person then. Ask somebody else, right? So, and what satisfaction would give you that you're going to have a better Easter because you brought someone with you and then they told you what a, what a grace it was. So it's time, right? This is the year. People, are, especially because of the, the pandemic and the isolation and the darkness and suffering, they are more open than before, not less, right? Believe that. They're more open than before, I think that's right. not mm-hmm. less. I think that's right. Yeah. And as far as like a discomfort with going to mass and not being Catholic, I'll just add to what you said. My husband and I went to a Catholic church for five years before going through RCIA. That is a long end of what, you know, I would encourage, but you can go and not be Catholic and just not participate in the Holy Eucharist. But it is beautiful. It is really beautiful to to go and experience that. Yeah, beauty speaks to people, right? So there's truth, goodness, and beauty, right? Three ways to God. Beauty is something that Catholic faith offers in a, in a particularly powerful way. Yeah, It does. And you see it woven together, you know, those three things. Mm-hmm. Um, in any event, yeah, thank you yeah. for that. Is there anything I didn't ask? It's such a big topic that we're talking about. I know we could talk for hours and hours, but is there anything um, that I didn't ask that you really want to address? You know what occurred to me is that everyone thinks about um, the different sacraments and they think about baptism as sort of like the Easter sacrament, right? Because you see people get baptized at Easter, things like that. We sprinkle holy waters as a reminder of our baptism. But do you know which sacrament Jesus actually unveiled for us and instituted for us on Easter? It was confession, right? So we know that Easter Sunday night, John chapter 20, he goes to the apostles gathered in prayer, out of fear, hiding behind closed doors, he appears to them, and the sacrament he institutes that night is the sacrament of confession. When you read John chapter 20, you can see how he does it, right? So it's a beautiful thing, right, that Easter Sunday is followed by Divine Mercy Sunday, right? So there are people who are going to come back to church on Easter who have not gone to confession. We think about confession being the Lenten sacrament, and it is for the devout. That's great. But Easter is going to bring people who are not you know, so deep in their faith right now. And when they go to Easter and they're inspired, it's a beautiful thing for them to know that there's another Sunday waiting for you, Divine Mercy Sunday, the sacrament that he actually instituted today on Easter. And many parishes have extended confessions offered, you know, the following Sunday. So something very beautiful about Jesus waiting till Easter Sunday to institute that sacrament that, that we treasure so much. So... That's something to reflect on as we get ready for for that beautiful day. That's great. That's such a good point. And just remembering 
wherever anybody is, no matter what they've done, there's nothing beyond the reach of God's mercy. So it there's is a There's nothing time you can do to make God love you more, and there's nothing you can do to make him love you less. That's beautiful. That's fantastic. Thank you, Father. Okay, before we go, I have to do this. Where can people find your CD? Because <laughs> it's recent. Sure, yeah. Well, I would offer two things. You know, it's so easy. with The internet makes things so easy now, right? So I'm pretty sure I don't do this myself, but I'm pretty sure if you go on YouTube and just search the name Father O'Hare, um, I think uh, the best thing, the, the title of the album is All Is Well. All Is Well. That's probably the easiest Which thing is a do. great message for this year, too. All yeah, is well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's comforting. Yeah. All is well. And I would categorize, I, I recently discovered um, a, a genre of music called chill. It's kind of this reflective, mellow, mostly guitar, vocal kind of music. I was like, oh, if I had to pick my category, like, what do I do? I think I do Catholic chill. I think that's what my album would be categorized as. So anyway, so if you go on YouTube and put Father O'Hare and then All Is Well, I'm pretty sure you'll find It'll music that way. But then the other way to do it, um, the parish where I'm at, St. Louis Parish. <clears throat> okay. It's all spelled out, S-A-I-N-T. Louisparish.org. We have a, a link on that website for, for the album as well. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Father. I think that was a great discussion. I appreciate you taking the time to come and sit with us Enjoy today. as well. Thank you. You're listening to Searching for More. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a review on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Also, make sure you follow the Diocese and the Arlington Catholic Herald on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And subscribe to our YouTube channels for regular videos that inspire, educate, and inform about the Catholic faith in our diocesan community.